Bowls. You, you gotta be there. Wentz. What bowls? What are you talking about? That doesn't it's make obvious. any sense that you would. Wentz no, is the Wentz bowls. is the guy. Bowls Have you even the, watched the who, Eagles? Who got the Wentz? Who got the Super Bowl? What we're bowls. Not, yeah. we're, oh, oh, hello oh, there. Hey, hello. Pastor Greg and I have spent the last half hour just preparing in prayer for this deep prayer moment. Welcome. Let's Both. see. Let's see if we can find ourselves here to see if we've made it onto our Facebook Live um, event that should be unfolding. So you feel free to. Hopefully, you're hopping on. And uh, yes, there it is. We, we are. That's it. That's it. We are. We are now live. All right. I, oops. Had to get that off of there. Shut off my volume. Anyhow, I see. Uh, has anybody hopped on? Yeah, we, we got some people hopping on. Good old, our buddy Jack, Lisa Wattis, Joy, Bob Rafferty. We've already got folks jumping on, and uh, we appreciate that. We're, we're, we uh, think it's going to be a, 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 a another meaningful time drawing our lives together. And um, tonight, Pastor Greg's going to be sharing from the Word, so that'll make you guys stick around a little bit longer. And, uh, I don't know about that. And um, we, uh, we're, we, thanks all of you. I see you jumping in here. Uh, hey, your wife, your wife's watching. So, <laughs> Maria. At least temporarily. He'll, he'll, yeah. <laughs> she made an appearance. Whether she really has walked away or not, you know, she's just leaving the computer hey, on. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, no, Greg, I was hey, there the whole hey, time. Hey. I'm supporting the woman. Greta is here. Uh, she is our producer and technical director. <laughs> so, if anything goes wrong. But um, today is, is Wednesday, obviously, and uh, as we are in that, that uh, 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 kind of ce celebrating, remembering the, that last week of Jesus, uh, on that Wednesday was actually the day that Judas uh, went and kind of took care of himself, um, made sure he was going to get his money. In Matthew chapter 26 and verse 14, then one of the twelve named Judas Iscariot went to the chief priests and said, what are you willing to give me to betray him to you? And they weighed out 30 pieces of silver to him. From then on, he began looking for a good opportunity to betray Jesus. So um, great to see you folks joining in. Thanks all of you. It means the world. Even my buddy Mike Mike, good to see you, pal. We played basketball together in in grade school. He was the center. Well, you weren't. And, uh, I wasn't <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mike, he's seen the picture of our eighth grade team and really wondered where I was, you know, with the rest of you guys. But um, <clears throat> you know, as I think about the fact that this is the day that Judas betrayed Jesus. <clears throat> Judas, he, he didn't do the betrayal, but he went and made the deal to set it up. I just wanted to start to by singing a couple songs that affirm our faith in Jesus. Uh, we don't have any instruments here. You know, I'm just going to lead us in, a, in just a couple choruses. You know, the Lord is here right now. Jesus said, where two are, are gathered in my name, I'll be there in their midst. He never leaves us or forsakes us. He's always with us. He's with you right now. And the reality is, there. This the technology is allowing us to have that sense of, being one in the spirit here. And uh, so if you know the song, feel free to sing with me. If not, th that's okay. It's just, let's just sing it to Jesus though, because it really is an affirmation. I mean, this is real life. It's an affirmation to um, him. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The greatest thing, the greatest thing in all my life is knowing you. The greatest thing in all my life is knowing you. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you more. The greatest thing 
greatest thing in all my life is knowing you. Now you've heard the tune, Loving You. The greatest thing in all my life is loving you. The greatest thing in all my life is loving you. I want to love you, Lord. I want to love you more. The greatest thing in all my life is loving you. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. So great to see you folks joining in. And uh, I hope you hum along right where you are. I mean, think about it though. Jesus Christ sitting on the throne. In glory, and he he's hearing us. I mean, he really is. I know there's a seven billion of us on this earth and singing to him in different languages, but for us united in this forum, he hears us singing that to him. Uh, let me just say a word of prayer. Oh, Father in heaven, we give you praise on this night where we remember historically that the betrayal was set into place. We know that. What Jesus, you said, no man would take your life, you would lay it down. Here we are 2,000 years later with our lives being uh, just changed eternally because of what you did 2,000 years ago. And so I thank you for each one that's joined in, Lord. Let us feel that sense of oneness in the, in the Holy Spirit, that sense of oneness in the name of Jesus as uh, we... Uh, look into your word together. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Pastor Greg, uh, you're going to be sharing through word God's word with us, so take it away, my friend. All right, yes, sir. Hello there, folks. I know uh, people say they can't hear me as well as uh, Pastor Vince, so <laughs> if I start to die down, you can yell at me in the comments, and I'll, I'll try to make sure I'm loud enough. Uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, you want to turn into the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 11. Uh, as I've been having opportunity to share from God's Word on, on uh, some evening services, I've been going through uh, Hebrews 11, and I, it wasn't my intention to do that this week. I was trying to think, Lord, what, what do you what do you want to say? Is there a different area of Scripture you want me to look at? Is there something that you want to say to the folks uh, this week? And I, I, I turned my Bible, and of course it opened right to Hebrews 11, because that's where I had my last marker in there. And I started reading the last part of the chapter, and I thought, all right, Lord, that, that's what you want me to share uh, with your folks, with your people, with your church tonight. So we're going to look at uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Um, you know, the, Hebrews 11 is, is you know, known as the, the hall of faith, the, the great um, champions of the faith uh, throughout the, the Old Testament. And each one uh, is given a few verses to describe, you know, but everyone is introduced the same way, by faith, by faith Abel, by faith Enoch, by faith Abraham, by faith... Moses, and, and we've been on Moses for a while, and, and I just wanted to read um, verse starting in verse 27. Uh, it says, By faith he, talking about Moses, left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. And I just, that, that really jumped out at me as I read that um, earlier this week where it said, He was not being afraid. And I thought, man, there's so many people today who, who are afraid. And maybe that's you right now tonight. Maybe you're, you're sitting there and you're afraid and you're, and you're, you're struggling back and forth between fear and faith. And uh, I, I think it's interesting as I was preparing for this, that, that thought was rolling through my mind of how you, you can't be ruled by both. You, you can't have uh, fear sit on the throne of your heart and at the same time say that you're living by faith. And, and if you're living by faith, you're not letting fear rule your heart. And I even was starting to formulate a, a sentence where, you know, fear and faith, they, they can't op occupy the same real estate. But then I realized that, that that's not right. And it's interesting because I was talking to, to Kathleen Thompson in our office 
uh, on Monday, and, she, and I was studying this passage, and that, that thought just came to my head, and she said she was just talking to Marty Strong, and I see Marty, you're, you're on there with us, and she said, you know, Marty was talking to me, and she said, Marty said, fear and faith can't occupy the same real estate, and I said, what? Is, is Marty reading my mind, or, or is she just ahead of me in the study here? I don't know what's going on, but that just confirmed to me, Lord, you obviously are, are trying to use me to say something. But then Kathleen made an interesting point. She said, she said, Pastor Greg, I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I have both. She said, I, I want to live by faith, but I, I still have fear. And I said, you know what, Kathleen? I said, I do too. And, and I don't think living by faith is the absence of fear. Now, as a matter of fact, I, I think if I look through each of these people here, I think Moses spent time being afraid. I know Abraham was afraid. I, I know the different champions of the faith. It's not that they, they never had fear. It's what did they allow to rule their actions? Did they let their fear rule their actions, or did they let their faith rule their actions? And the neat thing is some, some of these people, at some points, they did let fear rule their actions, but they were overwhelmingly characterized by their faith. And God doesn't record their failures here in Hebrews chapter 11. Everyone mentioned in this chapter had some type of failure or shortcoming or somewhere they, they even received discipline from the Lord. But God, and when he's recording things at the end of time, the only thing that's going to last are the things that were done for him by faith. And we all have that opportunity. So I, I, I want to challenge us to, to not be afraid, to, to be like Moses. He wasn't afraid of what? The anger of the king. Why? Because he endured as seeing him who was invisible. Moses could see who is invisible. And that takes us back to verse 1 in Hebrews 11, where a lot of us are familiar with the verse. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. That's, that's what the whole chapter is based on, is, is those two um, conveyances of, of what, is, what is faith. It, it's the ability to be sure of the things that we hope for, that we're confident of, of what the future holds for us as believers because we know who holds the future. Mm -hmm. And then it's also the conviction of things not seen. It's the ability to see the invisible. And Moses, because he had faith, he was able to see who is invisible. And who is invisible? Well, well, God is invisible. He, he, he's not seen visibly with us now. We know Jesus is with us. His Holy Spirit dwells with us. The Father looks down on us. But we can't see him. And there's sometimes, man, it'd be great if we could, because that would allay a lot of our fears if we knew when we saw him sitting on the couch next to us or, or walking in front of us or, or, or being behind us. But when you have faith, like Pastor Ben says it all the time, keep your eyes on Jesus. And when you live by faith, you can see him, even when he's invisible. But let's keep going. It says, by faith he kept the Passover. We're talking about Moses still. And sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith he kept the Passover, not only Moses, but all the Israelites. And the thing about God and his graciousness is everyone in Egypt was given the same ability to keep God's instructions. Anyone who had put the blood of the lamb on their doorpost, on, on the lentils and the frame of their door, anyone who had that blood, the angel of death, would pass over their house. Anyone who did not, the firstborn, their life was taken. Anyone could, could by faith, choose to obey God. And we have the same choice today. Are we going to live by faith? Are we going to do what we want to do? Are we going to react in fear? Are we going to respond to the world around us and to the crisis? Or are we going to continue to say, no, God, I'm going to live and obey you by faith. And because they lived by faith, they were passed over. And then it says, by faith, in verse 29, the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land. But the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea, but it wasn't the people's faith, was it? You know, whose faith was it? If you remember the story, the people get to a point where the Red Sea's in front of them. Pharaoh's army is coming, closing in behind them. There's nowhere to go. They're pinned in. They, they start to cry out in fear, it says. And Moses has to then say, be still and see the salvation of the Lord. And he stretches out his hand and a rod over the Red Sea. And the thing is, we, we know what happened because we, we've seen the movie with Charlton Heston or we've read the chapter. We've been in Sunday school. We know what happens, but they didn't. Mm -hmm. And even Moses, he didn't know what was going to happen. He could have stuck his hands out and God would have been like, I don't know what you're doing, but um, that ain't happening. But again, he responded to the God that he knew and the God that told him to do something and respond by faith. And when, and when Moses' faith is really what delivered the children of Israel, because then God moved and the, and the Red Sea parted and they were able to go to the other side. But it wasn't the people's faith. And sometimes, folks, it's your faith that is going to affect the folks around you. 
You know, I was talking to uh, Robin Klein and she was saying what an opportunity she has had with her own family to be able to, to share more than she ever has about the good news of the hope that she has in Jesus Christ and the peace that she feels. She's able to share that with them. I think people are more open now than they've ever been before to hear the message that we have, that we have hope, that we have assurance, that we can see the invisible. And because Moses had faith, millions of people were spared their lives. And then let's keep going here. It says, by faith... The walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. You guys remember that story from Sunday school? It's ridiculous. There's, there's not a general alive who would say, this is our battle plan. We're going we're gonna to walk around the city and do nothing for six days. And on the seventh day, we're going to walk around seven times, and then we're going to blow horns and shout, and the walls are going to fall down. That, that, that doesn't make any sense because it wasn't the people, it wasn't the plan that, that, that gave them success. It was the faith. God, only he required is do what I tell you to do and then see the salvation of the Lord. And God sometimes tells us to do ridiculous things, things that don't make sense by the world's standards. The world around us may look at us and go, you guys are crazy for what you believe in. But are you going to gonna live by what the world says or, or by what we know the scripture tells us to do? And then it says in verse um, 31, By faith Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were, given, who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. Um, and, I, and I love that Rahab is mentioned here, and, and, and she can never get past that title, right? Rahab the prostitute. She doesn't remain a prostitute, but she had been a prostitute. And she, I don't think God calls her that to place shame on her, but to show what he can do with somebody who simply gives them their faith to God. And I love how he blessed Rahab, right? Because Rahab, because of her faith, she was spared, and her whole family was spared. And then she goes and, and marries... Uh, the. We learn in the genealogy in the book of Matthew, she marries a man named Salmon, and they have a son, and his name is Boaz. And we read all about him in the wonderful story of Ruth and how he becomes the kinsman redeemer. And then, you know, a few generations later, the, the David is born from the lineage of, of Rahab, and she uh, is the great-great-grandmother of the king of Israel. And then if you follow that lineage all the way down for two thousand or for another thousand years, she, she is in the, in the lineage mentioned in the book Gospel of Matthew as, as being uh, in a lineage and heritage of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God used that prostitute who put her faith in a God that she knew nothing about except that he had been more powerful than all the gods in the, in the land in, of Canaan around her. And she said, I'm going to follow that God. I want to back up for a second because I forgot to mention some. It says, if you, if you look through verses um, uh, 28 to 30, it tells us that first faith, it, it led them out of Egypt. And then it took them through the Red Sea. And then it brought them into the Promised Land. And that's what our faith will do for us. You might not see the way out of this circumstance right now. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe just the kids being home. You feel the walls closing in around you. Maybe you're, you're sick or you know someone's sick or you're worried about catching this virus. And what I'm telling you is faith is going to be what delivers you. Faith may not prevent you from getting it, but faith is the one that's going to, to lead you out of it. Faith is going to be the one that takes you through it. And faith will be the one that leads you into the promises that God has for us. Let's keep going. It says in, in verse 32, What more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, of David and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were... Oh, let's stop there. What more shall I say? Even the author realizes his sermon's getting a little long, right? The author of Hebrews, I believe, is a good pastor, and he realizes when the people are starting to fall asleep, and hopefully I'll have that same recognition before I bore you to death. But he says, what more can I say? If I took the time to tell you about every person of faith mentioned in the scriptures, we, we wouldn't have enough time. But let me just mention a few when he lays out there uh, some, and people I wouldn't consider to be great people of faith. If you, like Gideon is the first one he mentions. Right? And even the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and he said, uh, how art, you know, Who art thou, the mighty man of valor? And where was Gideon when he said that? He was hiding in the wine press, threshing grain, so that the Midianites wouldn't see him and steal it. And even when, when he calls Gideon, Gideon says, I'm not sure you got the right guy. I'm a nobody. I come from the smallest tribe in all of Israel. And out of that tribe, we're, we're the smallest clan. And, and, and I'm, the, I'm the runt of the litter. I'm a peanut. I'm nobody. God. You've got to have the wrong guy. Maybe that's you today. 
Maybe you feel like, God, you got the wrong guy. Someone else can have faith, but you're not calling on me. Well, God uses a whole lot of nobodies. And I'm thankful because there's two of them right here <laughs> that God is using. You know, we got we got a, an Irish kid from Maple Shade, an Irish kid from Northeast Philly, and, and God is choosing to use us. And I, there's nothing special about us. It's just that we've said yes to what God has called us to do. And, and God is calling us all to something today. Amen. I don't know what it is for you. I can only speak to what God's telling me to do. But I know he's speaking to you today. And you're not a nobody in God's economy. Because God doesn't have any nobodies. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter how much faith you have. God can use even the smallest amount if you're willing to obey when he tells you what to do. And then Barak, he, he was kind of a coward too. He wouldn't go into war until Deborah, the prophetess, was with him. Samson, we don't usually recognize him as a man of great faith. We see him as a man of failure, someone who got, you know, uh, enamored with the love of a woman and gave up, you know, his, his secret of strength. But the last moment of his life, he sacrificed himself in faith, knowing that God would conquer his enemies. And then it says, what, what did these... Heroes like David and Samuel the prophet, what they have in common? Well, through faith, again, not through their own strength, not through their ingenuity, not through their plans or, or, or their gifts or their abilities. By faith, they conquered kingdoms. And, and David certainly did that along with mm. Barak and, and Gideon. They enforced justice. They obtained promises. Are you willing to obtain the promises that God has for you? It requires faith, but it also requires action. None of these people sat still once they were given the orders to go and to move. See, that's, that's the difference. So many people say I have faith, but when then when they're told to move, they don't, right? And, and lack, you know, lack of moving is, is, is just as sinful as, as doing something disobedient. When you know what God's telling you to do something and you choose to not do it, you're, you're, you're sinning against God, and it's a lack of faith. But these people were able to conquer kingdoms, obtain promises. They stopped the mouths of lions, you know, several in, in this list, right? David, we know. We, he, he grabbed a lion by the beard and smote him as he took away his lamb. Samson had a lion jump out of the wilderness on him, and he, and he tore it in two. Uh, it's, we're probably thinking even here of Daniel, who's not mentioned, but you know we, we hear that Daniel was tossed into the den of the lions. And, and yeah, it does say the prophets in there. But you know specifically, uh, I think maybe the author may be thinking of Daniel. And imagine that. You think Daniel was afraid when he got cast into that den? He didn't know the end of the chapter. He hadn't read it. He wrote it much later, but he wrote it down. But I'm sure he was afraid. But when he got there and the angel had all the lion's mouth shut, his, his faith returned and his fear evacuated. <clears throat> they stopped the mouths of lions. They quenched the power of fire. I think that's referring to uh, our friend Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I love their faith because they said they had... The ability to say to the king, king, we believe that our God can deliver us from this fire. But even if not, we're still not going to bow the knee to your idols. And, and folks, God sometimes will do these miraculous things and deliver us from our enemies and do things that are, are amazing. And sometimes he causes us to get thrown into the fire. But these three men, right, they were thrown into the fire. And as, as Nebuchadnezzar looked in, it says there's a fourth like the Son of Man walking with them. And I, I believe that's none other than, than our Lord Jesus Christ in his pre-incarnate state, walking with them in the fire. And he always promises to be with us even in the fire. And that's our comfort and our hope. They escaped the edge of the sword. They were made strong out of weakness. And I, and I love that. And Paul echoed that in, um, in Corinthians because he said, the Lord told on, you know, said to me, when, when you are weak, then you are strong. Right? Because why? When, when we're weak, we're not relying on ourselves. We're not relying on our intelligence, our resources. We're not relying on our ingenuity or our finances. When we're weak physically, when we're weak individually, we're truly strong because that's when we cry out and say, God, save me. I think of Peter as he was walking on the water and he says he saw the wind and the waves around him and he began to sink and he, he didn't have time for a lengthy prayer. He didn't have time right. to, to go make a sacrament or do confession or Holy Communion. He didn't have time to, to run and, and get advice from anyone. He just simply cried out, Lord, save me. And it says immediately the Lord reached to him and brought him in to safety. And sometimes that's the only prayer we have is, Lord, save me. But if that's a prayer of faith, God will respond to that prayer. So we need to be weak so that we can be strong. They became mighty at war. They put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. That's talking about the prophet Elijah and the prophet Elisha. Each had a woman, uh, a widow, come to him and their son was dead, and they were, and God raised 
um, each of those sons back to life. But then th there's a definite turn here. We talk about all these things where they, they were mighty and they escaped the sword and all these valiant things happened. But then in verse 35, it makes a definite switch. Look what it says next. It says, some were tortured. Well, <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't like that part of the verse, right? I, I like the stop in the mouths of the lions and the quenching the fire. I, that that's all sounds good. But you notice the, the verse started through faith. They did these things, and it hasn't changed topic. And by the same faith, <clears throat> it says they were tortured. By faith, they refused to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even change and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with a sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. Like, first of all, you know, it takes, it takes I think, more faith to go through the suffering than it does to have these great victories because we have to endure. We have to, we have to hold up under. And, and unfortunately, that, that's the case of, of most of us here. Right? It says others in verse 36. Others, they suffered mocking and flogging and, and even change. It, it doesn't even name them. And how many nameless martyrs were there from, from the time? It, it, this is, I think, reflecting back to the time of the Maccabeans and, and the revolt they had. And, and under Antiochus Epiphanes, many of the Jews were put to death for their faith. But even ever since Christ, you know, Stephen was the first martyr. And ever since, people have been put to death for their faith. Many nameless souls who, who had this great faith. And they're only recognized here as others. And it's not the others from, from the lost island. This is, <laughs> this is the others that God cares deeply about and that he remarks and remembers their faith. Even though they're not named, God knows everyone. Mm. He knows everyone who paid a price to follow him. And there's reward waiting in heaven for him. It says, of whom the world was not worthy. And I, and I can't help but think, um, mm. Vince, would you, would you look up Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 18? Romans 8.18, 8, it reminds me of what Paul was saying there about what we, you know, not being worthy of this world, the glory that we're going to receive. What, what did Paul say in For Romans? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Not worthy to be compared with the glory that's to be revealed to us. Right? This world is not worthy of those martyrs. <clears throat> but think about that. The glory that's going to be revealed in, in us. And Paul includes himself, and we're included in that, that we have glory waiting to be revealed in us. The glory of Christ is going to be revealed in us when he comes back for us. Oh, what a day. And then First Peter talks about inheritance that we have. Right? We're not worthy of this world because we, we have a, a, an inheritance waiting for us. It says in First Peter 1, 4, there's an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for his salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Again, that's what we have waiting for us. Can you see the invisible? Can you see the reward that's waiting for you? All these who, who they live by faith and, and then some died by faith. And, and some people give a trip and say that if you're sick, if you're suffering, God's judging you. God's punishing you. God's somehow unhappy with you. And, and that's, that's not biblical, mm. right? It, it, it's, it doesn't match up. With the people that I see in Scripture who, who lived and they died by faith, right? Sometimes God calls you to live by faith, and it means you're going to have to suffer. Mm. And, and I think of those out there who, who I know suffer long and hard with sickness and illness and bodily pain. Mm. Now, I, I know uh, Bob McQuarrie, <laughs> you've, you've suffered a lot in, in your years, but your faith is what marks your life. I think of Carol Fox, and I know she very quietly and diligently and faithfully serves the Lord, but, but she, she deals with physical suffering that you and I could probably not imagine. And it's her faith that endures and gets her through. And, you know, that's not an easy, that's not an easy task, right? To say, it's one thing, I'm willing to die for Jesus, right? If, 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 if somebody came in here and, and pointed a gun at me right now and said, deny Christ or die, I would happily take the bullet. But the harder thing is when God says, no, I, I don't want you to take a bullet for me, but I want you to take a sickness. I want you to take an illness, and I want you to take some suffering. Why? Because when we suffer, we identify more closely with our Savior, with Christ. We, we, 
we, we come in tune, our frequency kind of tunes in further to his. We identify with his, and, and he knows more about suffering than, than any of us really do. But the other thing I, I realize, too, is that sometimes our suffering isn't even for us, right? And some people look at it and say, ah, oh, you're suffering because of your sin. And I say, well, that, that's baloney. Uh, you know, sometimes there's consequences for sin, right? And, and God disciplines you know, whom he loves, he disciplines, and sometimes he uses discipline to draw us back to himself. And if you're if you're out there right now and, and you've been sinning and you've been knowingly going against the word of God and, and there's consequences to your life, that's God trying to draw you back. But there's no punishment. You understand, there's, there, you're not forsaken. You may feel persecuted. You may feel sick. You may feel abandoned. But God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. You understand, Friday, we, we celebrate Good Friday, where Jesus was nailed to that cross, and he got to cry out in agony, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And I can't even imagine the turmoil. God forsaken by God. Who, who can imagine that? Who can picture you know, that Jesus never, ever separated from the Father from the beginning of time, was separated. We don't know how long. He who knew no sin became sin so that you and I could be called the very righteousness of God. I can't imagine that. But well, here's the one thing I do know. He cried out, my God, why have you forsaken me? So that I would never have to. So that you would never have to cry out because you are not forsaken. We, we, are, we are not forsaken. We are not left alone. And, and Jesus took the punishment that we deserve because God is not out there to punish us. That's not his goal. Remember, he's not the Godfather. He's God the Father. <laughs> Right? And he and he didn't I make like that one. he didn't That's make us Let's go. <laughs> he didn't make us an offer we can't refuse. He made us an offer that we shouldn't refuse. Uh, okay. He made us an offer that's too good to refuse. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we, we get to choose if we're going to accept or reject him. Mm. And I pray if you're if you're there tonight, you're listening, and you haven't accepted the love and forgiveness of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm. that you would cry out today and say, "Lord, save me," and He will. And he'll bring that hope, not just of eternal life, but the hope that he'll be with you in this life and that he will see you through. There's no trial that you're experiencing that he will not walk with you, beside you, and see you through to the end. John MacArthur said this in one of the things I was reading. He said, here's the pinnacle of faith, a willingness to accept the worst the world has to offer, which is death, because of the trust in the best God has to offer, which is resurrection. Mm. See, that's what Jesus proved because... He didn't stay in the grave on Friday. Three days later, he arose. And because he arose from the dead, he said, I will bring resurrection power and life to all who believe in me. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. Right? He will live forever. That's, that's the promise and the hope that we have in Jesus. And that's what the author of Hebrews is trying to instill in us. And then he finishes the chapter. He says in verse 39, And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect, right? They didn't receive what was promised. All these Old Testament saints died before the fulfillment of all the prophecy came to fruition, which was the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And it's not just that he came, but that he died and he took our punishment and then he rose again. And because of that, you and I can be clothed in his righteousness and we can stand and be declared righteous before God. No Old Testament saint could ever experience that. But see, they, their faith was amazing because they trusted what God's word said, and they looked forward to it. They, they acted as though they could see it. They acted as though it was already theirs. I feel like my faith is so much weaker because what they had to believe was based on something that hadn't happened yet. It was still future. Our faith is based on historical fact. It's happened. It's assured. And I feel like my faith is so weak compared to these great saints. But it says, now though, right, God provided something better, right? That The better, the new covenant that both Ezekiel and Jeremiah and the prophets, they talked about, where we be given, that removed from us the heart of stone and replaced with the heart of flesh. The new covenant that Jesus talked about, that he made at that last supper when he talked about uh, that he was the Lamb of God who would take away the sin of the world and that he would offer us his life and forgiveness in exchange for ours. That's something better, right? The hope that we have, the resurrection promised to us, the resurrection power to us now. It's for us that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. And that's the mystery of the church that, that has been revealed in the New Testament, that, that we are grafted in, that we, that we as the church have been, have been grafted in to the promises of, of Israel. And now we, all who believe by faith, 
They believe looking forward to the Messiah. We believe because of what the Messiah had done, but we're all together by faith, and we have been made perfect. And, and that's what Hebrews, even uh, chapter 12, verse 2, says that Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith, and that he, because he took sin on him, perfected us for all time. I hope that brings you comfort tonight. I hope that brings you um, a sense of we're part of these of this hall of faith, right? We are part of this because we're part of Christ. Mm -hmm. And we identify with him and he identifies with these folks of faith and that we are, and, and, and we're all going to be reunited one day in heaven. We're going to sit there and say, Abraham, tell me the story. Moses, tell me, what were you thinking yeah. when you got to that Red Sea and everyone was going <laughs> to the Egyptians were coming? You know, David, tell me, what was it like to face down Goliath? And we get to hear these stories of faith. And I believe God has a great DVD collection. And we're going to get to see all these events. And I look forward to that. Well, I'll get to find out if I'm taller than Zacchaeus. Right. And, and Nick Foles will be there with us. Well, you know, you know and Carson Wentz yeah, too. Yeah, there you go. So we'll, right. we'll, we'll get to have this argument throughout eternity. Yeah. Um, but let me pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for your the testimony of, of these witnesses of faith, of these heroes of faith. But thank you that you are, are, the, are the final answer. God, you, you, Jesus, you were the one who came to take our place. Lord, you took the punishment that, that I deserved, or it was personal. You took the punishment that each of us deserved so that none of us would ever have to face, face that punishment, that none of us would ever have to cry out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Lord, thank you for that promise. Thank you for that hope. And help us to live in that hope each and every day, especially during these times. We pray in your name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Fantastic. I appreciate that. I do want to, just a little production note, if you're hearing some snoring, it's not Greta. It's not me. <laughs> Greg put Tootsie to sleep, oh, our well. dog. Our dog is sleeping and she's snoring. And if you're wondering, what is that sound? Uh, if it's near the camera, that's Tootsie. But um, <clears throat> this is our prayer sheet. Uh, they're purple this week. And uh, we encourage you um, to look on our website because the prayer sheet gets put up there. <clears throat> we also leave a, a couple of them inside the glass enclosure off of our parking lot doors for you to be able to pick them up. But I really appreciate what Greg was sharing because uh, some folks have been sitting on this prayer sheet languishing through real, you know, extended difficulty. <clears throat> and one of the things that really, we've talked about it before, just really burdens us as pastors is when you'll see somebody on television or on the internet or whatever, basically bullying um, people by saying, if you just had enough faith, um, you can mute your sound. If, if you just had enough faith, um, you, <laughs> you would, you, you'd be able to be healed. But, um, and the person's just carrying the weight of, oh, it's my fault. I don't believe hard enough. And Greg, you did a just fantastic job, uh, laying out for us scripturally, mm. just that it's not that sometimes by faith, you end up on the prayer sheet struggling physically. And uh, so we're going to be going through some of those uh, prayer requests. I do want to remind you of some of the things that are happening for the rest of the week. Um, you, you uh, the, the, the Faith Weaver and Friends, is there something happening tomorrow night? Yeah, tomorrow, 6.30. Um, the meeting number is uh, on the phone. Join us. Um, many of you had gotten word that we were going to be doing a drive-through communion. And... Um, we got word from some of our <clears throat> township leadership um, from coming down, not not their decision, but coming down from the state and the county that, that they really were heightening some re gathering restrictions. And we certainly want to be cooperative. We don't want to be, you know, in the eye of the storm, people saying, whoa, we saw a line of traffic backed up there in their parking lot. And so what we'll be doing Friday is we'll be having right here on this same site, Facebook Live, we'll be doing um, a communion service at three o'clock. Now we have sealed communion direct from the factory. It's a little communion cup. You take the first layer off, there's a wafer, you take the second layer off and it's the, 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 the juice there. We have them sitting in our glass enclosure uh, at, at, the, uh, at the church. If you wanna come by and pick them up, to participate with us on Good Friday at three o'clock online. Um, but obviously you can also use bread and as I said, a drink there in, in your own home. Um, we could share it together. Maybe you won't be able to do it at three o'clock. It'll then be posted for you to be able to um, 
watch it when you're able and, and to share in it. Um, Sunday morning, uh, as long as it's not pouring rain, at 6.30, right outside here, uh, I'm going to be doing a sunrise scripture reading of, of the resurrection. Uh, at 9.30, I'll be watching him. There you go. <laughs> 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 and then at uh, 9.45, uh, there's a Sunday School Zoom meeting. If you want to be part of that, again, go to our website, go to this Facebook page. The, the link will be there. And then, of course, our uh, Easter worship video will be up Sunday morning. And again, we've got some surprise guests for, uh, right? Got a lot of surprise guests. Yeah, that's right. Jim you know, Goodall, want to be there? Yeah. The San Diego Zoo? <laughs> <laughs> like Johnny Carson. No, but anyhow, we've got surprise guests to celebrate that, that day with us. Um, well, good to see many of you on here. At this point, I want to ask, if you have a prayer request, specific one, put it up here. And it could be what it's okay if it's just from your heart for uh, for people in general or for someone specifically. We want to highlight um, uh, a prayer, just if you would, for Terry Dar, who was taken to the hospital. We want to uh, be surrounding her with prayer that and that the Lord would just allow them to diagnose her uh, uh, properly. Um, uh, th there's numerous uh, different, I, I don't want to give you good news. I don't think I did last week. Pastor Leo had his x-ray and his pneumonia is cleared out and gone. And along with that, Laura LaFleur, we had been praying. <clears throat> Listen, this is, a, this is a neat story. So Bill LaFleur, uh, was, Bill is Laura's husband. Laura went in for surgery to have a, a, a tumor removed that was literally larger than a softball uh, closer to a small volleyball and she had the surgery done on Wednesday Bill when 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 Bill was later he wasn't able to watch this but later when he was watching this this event Bill was watching it he watched our our, our Bible study the prayer time he got a phone call while he was watching it and he hit pause on the phone was his wife, dear Laura Lafleur. If you're, I'm not sure if you guys are on here right now or not. I, if you are, just say hi or something. But, um, and she was telling him, great news. The doctors have said I'm doing better. Uh, they, they got better results, better than they expected. I can come home. And he was like, wow, what great news. Uh, she told him what time to come get her. He hit play. And right then we were praying for her. Now again, it was Wednesday night, but but for him, it was, the Lord. Gave, it was the moment that he was listening to it. We're praying for her. Is the moment he got the phone call. So we're praising the Lord um, for her. We uh, praise the Lord. Bill Seneff is home. He was the first person in our church that w was a positive diagnosed with uh, COVID nineteen. He's doing well, and um, we have different. We just want to be. Uh, praying for uh, these many different different folks have been giving us names, family members that have COVID-19, others who were exposed to it and they're in, in quarantine. So we got a lot of that that we want to just continue to be praying for. Yes. Alma, Alma put up, uh, she has her daughter, uh, has the virus, and her, and her husband, her mm. daughter, and her son-in-law, um, both are diagnosed, so... Pray for healing for them. Uh, Linda Latirzo was asking for prayer for the the, Robert, the Rabbits family, uh, apparently owners of a shop right that her husband Ray works at. I'll uh, just be praying for that family as they're, they're going through the grief of that. And I saw uh, uh, Ann McCormick had asked for prayer for um, Tim's family. It's been it's the year anniversary of, of Tim's mom passing, so just to pray for continued peace uh, amongst the family there as they remember that. I see, uh, like... Uh... Karen Brown, her father, is she was just put into a uh, care facility. Of course, she can't get in to see him. And, uh, you know, uh, Jack and Mary Gabriel had mentioned that, that their son is in a, um, a group home and they can't get in to see him. And so many of you may have loved ones like that that you're not able to get in to see. We certainly want to be praying for them. Laura Bowman, uh, you know, Debbie Dow Sandro's mother. Um, again, when I start mentioning names, I forget names. So... But uh, we want to be praying for them. We're praying for our uh, police department. 
and uh, being reminded that um, uh, to kind of to be understanding of them because uh, they don't make the rules, but they will be the ones that will be called upon to enforce them. And uh, so obviously, as we're all seeking to be good neighbors, uh, part of that is is you know appreciating the fact that they're sometimes having to go deal with those who are who have chosen another path. Mm-hmm. And so be in prayer for them as as sometimes they get threats from somebody that they're going to you know spit on them whatever and you know um, just be in prayer for them. We we we're praying for our certainly our nurses, our doctors, our first responders, EMTs, all grocery all, store all, workers, all of the, mm-hmm. the 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 different workers. And uh, you continue to put prayer requests up here and let each other see them. And Bob, Bob, Bob Bradford is asking prayer for his sister Debbie, uh, trouble breathing and a fever. Ro Jung has a sister in law with, with the virus. Uh, it's affecting a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and certainly for those who have been laid off without, yeah. without pay, uh, you know, to see the, uh, just the astronomical you know, uptick in unemployment requests, you know, just is obviously uh, the longer the situation continues, uh, the more difficult people feel it. So one of the things we want to communicate to you also is if that's you, uh, if, you know, we want you to reach out to us and communicate to us. You know, we obviously haven't figured out the technology yet to look into your refrigerator and see if you ran out of milk and you, and you don't have money to get more. You know, we, we're, we're not monitoring your gas tank to see are you down to, you know, three miles of driving and you have no money for gas. Let us know. Reach out to us uh, and the, the church can care for you in, in some of these ways. Um, all right. So we're going to have a, a, a time of prayer here. And... Um, so, um, Pastor Greg, I'm going to have you lead us in some prayer first, and uh, then I'll be praying. We encourage you to, to, to join along in prayer with us, you know, right where you are. Father, I know you've overheard, and I, I know that you care, and, and Lord, you, you want us to come to you with our prayers. And it tells us in Hebrews that uh, when you rose from the dead and that you ascended back to heaven, where you sit now at the right hand of the Father, where you ever live, to make intercession for your sins. And Lord, so we, we deliver our request to you, knowing that you take our request right to the throne of the Father, and that you you care. Lord, it's, this isn't just empty words that we pray to the ceiling, but that you hear and that you care and you respond. So Lord, I, I pray for those who, who are sick, whether it's with this virus or something else, Lord, that you would reach out and that you would touch them. Lord, we know that you have the power to heal. Lord, so I ask that you, you would bring healing to those who need it, desperately. Lord, I pray for the family members of those who are sick, that they would be able to care and comfort them. Lord, I I know it's difficult for people like uh, Karen and Jack and others who can't see loved ones because they just, they can't gain access because it's too dangerous to even be exposed themselves or to bring, to bring possible contamination inside the building. So I just pray that you, those who need an extra touch of your hand to know that you care, that you're there, or we know that you we're supposed to, by faith, see the invisible, but sometimes we just need to feel that touch, Lord. And it's it's not always, uh, you know, physical touch, Lord, but just a touch in our spirit that we know that you are with us. I ask you to touch those who need to be uh, reached by you. Lord, I do pray for those who are affected by this virus in another way, Lord, where they, they don't, they've lost their income or their ability to, to make money or, or provide for their families. And Lord, they may be sitting there asking, Lord, we don't know what to do. But Lord, I pray that they would be like the Israelites, uh, and they said, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And Lord, they're trusting and in by faith that you are going to, to meet their needs, to see them through. And Lord, it's difficult. That's where the rubber meets the road. So I pray that these folks who are in that situation, Lord, that they would uh, first trust you, but also to, to make their needs known and that your church would rise up and, and be your church and to, to do all we can to meet the needs of those who have them. I thank you so much for those folks in church who have sought to, to reach out to the folks who who might not be able to get out, or people like Jackie Da Silva and, and the Ferraros and, and others, Lord, who have just made sure to reach out and, and get groceries or, or get go to the pharmacy or just make sure that someone's checking in or calling. Lord, I just pray that uh, that continues to happen and, and that people would um, be blessed and that people would see the witness of your church and respond 
and, and want to be part of, of, of a body that cares for each other so well. I pray for the, the doctors and the nurses and the, and the EMTs and the orderlies and the people who clean the hospital and all the jobs that have to require them to go in and be and put themselves at, at risk. I just pray that you, you put a hedge of protection around them, that you fill their hearts with peace and, and to give them a greater purpose in, in serving the, um, one another that, that, that would keep them hopeful and encouraged as morale might get low. I pray for those in the grocery store, the people who have to be there again, Lord, and they keep us fed. Lord, I'm so grateful for them, Lord, because I, I haven't missed a meal yet. And God, I pray that you would continue to grant them safety and, and health. And God, I just, uh, I pray for um, the services for this weekend and, and for tomorrow and the things that are going to go on, not just in Emmanuel, but churches around this country where people who have maybe wandered or, or strayed from listening to you, your voice, your word, that they would they would come back in droves and, and give be given hope that you would draw many folks to yourself mm. and that you would renew our faith, that you would renew our strength and that you would unite us in one body, in one mind, in one spirit. We pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Father, I join in prayer <clears throat> for uh, our, our college students, particularly our college seniors, uh, with a class of, uh, the senior class of 2020 is going to hold a very unique, at least we think, a very unique place in our academic history. And uh, we just pray for them, that you would surround them with uh, peace as they are uh, just trying to finish off their college days uh, studies in a very uh, non-traditional way. Uh, and just pray for them. I know that there's even that sense of that loss of, of, of a very special time of sharing with roommates and doormates and you know it, 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 in you know that that moment of life so we pray for them lord i pray for our high school students i have no idea lord what what it, the the plans are i uh, i uh for uh the state but i my prayer would be that they get uh some time back in the classroom to be able to finish off the year. And so uh, I pray for Beth Norsha, our superintendent of schools, that for her and the Board of Ed, as they obviously have to respond to uh, the governor's um, uh, team, we just pray you'd give them wisdom um, that, that would just, uh, just, just perhaps would allow an opportunity for these students to be able to, uh, finish the school year in the classroom. Lord, I just pray for our teens. I thank you for Brian Schroll, our, our the leader of our youth leadership team, our, our, our youth leader, and for his wife, Sandy. And just pray your blessing on them as they, and the, the leadership team as they've uh, have just cared for these teenagers. We pray for the teens, just as they, they're, they're, boy, I just remember my teen years and just, just the value of of being together. And so I just pray for our youth group that you would allow them to continue to have a sense of of connection with one another, uh, for the care that they could maintain with each other. Uh, we, we just commit them to you. We certainly, Lord, uh, ask you to allow there to be uh, peace in our community in our and in our land. Um, that, uh, that we might, um, as your children, uh, we might display a love for one another that uh, is as contagious, is more contagious than a physical virus. And so we commit the, the prayer sheet names to you, the names that have been coming up on the uh, Facebook page. Uh, I thank you for those sitting right now where they are sitting. Hmm. I really do feel a, a, a sense of, of oneness, Lord, and that's because you are everywhere all the time. Mm. And so we are one in you. Yes. We thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 All right. Well, we've had a great time here with you guys, and uh, uh, I appreciate your your 
ministry in the word, Greg, and sharing with us. And we have spent uh, 55 minutes together. We, we took it a little longer this time, right? That's shocking. Week. It went longer when <laughs> I was there. How that happens. <laughs> no, come on. You know, that was, that was tremendous. That was tremendous. But uh, we want to thank you for joining in with us. And um, I want to make sure you get your money's worth. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and um, make sure before we sign off, let's have a, I'm gonna have a quick little uh, little round here of, hey, love one another. I love you. Hello, whatever. Like, here, I'll do one right there. I love you. That's yo. Oh, there oh we there's go. a lot of loves. <clears throat> What's that? There's a lot of loves popping Good. up. Good, a lot of them now. popping up. Good, that's right. I could have clicked the heart, couldn't I? <clears throat> but anyhow, thanks, folks means the world to us to know that we're not just talking to the phone, you know? And uh, we're, we, we, we thank you for joining in. God bless you. Keep in touch. Stay in tune with our different uh, pages. And uh, as things change quickly, we'll try to keep up. All right? Take care. Both.